Hello friends, let's talk about Matplotlib. As you may be aware, Matplotlib is the most used visualization and plotting package in Python. I've started a series of videos that I'm gonna take you through little by little, teaching you every bit of details you need to know about Matplotlib. Here I am on the Matplotlib official webpage. So you can see how to install using pip or Deconda if you're in Conda environment. And there are a couple of learning resources that you can reach out and have a look. But let's go back and start a Jupyter Notebook. And I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple plot to begin with. Let's see if I have matplotlib installed. If you don't get any error messages, that, mean, that means that you have matplotlib installed. What version have I got installed? Is it up to date? Yeah, that's not too old. That's 3.50 and the latest is 3.52. So I could go ahead and update it, but I don't really need it. Okay, from matplotlib import pyplot and use it under the name PLT. And that's the convention that pretty much everybody uses in Python environment. Now that I have matplotlib imported, let's start very simple. The figure function from PLT that calls for a new figure to be produced. I'm gonna say I want a figure size of seven by seven. Let's see what this gives us. It has produced a blank canvas in the background, but it's not gonna show me anything because I'm not asking for any data to be visualized. I'm just saying what I'm gonna be asking you to plot needs to be in the size of seven by seven. This is normally the opening command for a matplotlib if you wanna specify the size. And normally, depending on what environment you are coding, the closing command is plt show. Again, I'm not gonna see anything here, but say if you were coding in VS Code in a spider, normally for your plot to be shown, you need to call plt show. But Jupyter Notebooks doesn't really need that. Now use the plt and give me a plot. So you can see that this way without providing any data, I am able to get a plot, which is a blank canvas that I can write into it. So what are the elements A y axis, an X axis and the size of the figure is seven by seven. So that's a square one. The data I'm gonna be using today is the median salary based on programming language by age. A combination of Java and Python salaries here, only Python salaries here and only Java salaries here. They are all based on the age. So for this one is from 25 to 35. And I also have a bigger age range for this database that I'm just gonna paste the data here for now. I'm not gonna really use them, but I will use this later in the tutorial. Copy the all languages salary. I want you to uh, plot age. First, import the X axis, and then we import the Y axis. Oh, okay, that's a linear relationship. So as age goes up on the X axis, the salary goes up in the y-axis. But this is not what exactly I want my plot to look like because I want it to be really presentable, really self-descriptive. I'm gonna use the plt function again. I want you to give it a title and say all pro on age. Okay, now I have a title coming up on the graph. Font size equals 14. Not too bad, maybe 16 wouldn't be bad. I would like to label the X axis. So I'm just gonna use plt.xlabel and let's call it H. See that H also appeared here. And if I say plt y label salary in USD, yep, I'm gonna have salary in USD. So this is the most basic form of plotting data import Python salaries. So I'm just gonna go ahead, copy, just paste it underneath all salary because age is the same for all of them. I can say I have already plotted age against all salary. What I need to do next is to age to plot age against Python salary. I have two lines, which I don't know which one is Python and which one is all salary. We can use plt legend, type the name of the variables the way they appear in the code. So I know that 
first I had all and then I had I am plotting all first and I am plotting Python next. This is easy now because I have a legend that tells me blue is all programming languages, orange is Python only. Let's go ahead and bring in Java data. I'm just gonna go ahead and say plt plot a3 and then I need to add Java to the legend and you can see that Java is in green. If I didn't know in what order have I plotted and I don't wanna go ahead and change my legend every single time. I want this one to be labeled all, Python. Third one, Java. And I can easily get rid of this list here and just call plt legend. I will get exactly the same thing. And I don't really need to remember which one was in the first of the list, which one was next. It will be automatic. Now, let's talk more about aesthetics. Let's start with line width. The line width of four. That is number four in blue line width. Line width of four. Java. You can see that Java in green is masking the blue. What if I wanted the blue to be masking the green? Then I would have to change the order I am calling it. So look, if I take this from here, the blue will be masking the green. You might have noticed that so far we didn't choose any colors. The colors were rotated automatically by matplotlib. What we can do, we can actually select the colors that we want. I'm gonna come back to this bit later, but for now I just wanna talk about colors. So these are the main colors that we normally use for matplotlib, but there is more that you can produce. For celery, I want black. There you go, you get black there. For Python, I want color blue. And for Java, I'm gonna select red. How about markers? What if I wanted to add little circles at every data points? First, let me show you from the matplotlib. You can specify what type of line or marker do you want to add to your graph? A dash will give you a solid line. Double dash will give you a dashed line. Go back, I want the marker to be a circle. And that's going to add these little circles on the black line. Python, I want the marker to be number four. It's really visible because the line width is very high. You can see those little triangles. Um, I can also say I want dots, little dots, and that will add them to it. I want the marker for Java to be like uh, all programs. Let me show you how to make that happen quickly. Color, and you have a marker. You can actually combine them. Go before a label because it's a positional argument and just say, I want K, O. It's gonna produce the same things without the line. So if I add the line, I will get the line and those markers. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. For Python, I don't want to say color and marker separately. I'm just gonna go before label and say B and dot. I'm gonna get blue dots. What if I wanted some line added? Green, um, probably X. And let's add a line to that. Brilliant, that's how it looks now. And add to this plot is a grid. It will help us to understand and read data much easier. So if I say PLT grid, there is a grid that I can actually say age 32 gets paid this much if it's a Java developer. And there are ways to kind of change those ticks as well. But if you don't want that grid, simply just go to PLT grid and just say false. It will remove it. And if you make it true or leave it blank, it will give you a grid. If you say print pl.available, it will show you the built-in available styles in matplotlib that you can use. I'm gonna show you how it looks. So the graph looks like this for now. If I go under my plt figure and say plt.style.use and the one that I wanna use, 538, copy that down here. And you can see that has changed the background to a bit of grayish color. Let's choose seaborn white. Okay, this is also nice. Um, I also like ggplot, so this is from R programming that also adds a gray background. So you can use any of these styles to make your graph look better. Something really cool. This is a built-in method in matplotlib, so that's pltxkcd. So it's a method, it doesn't really take any argument at this point. I'm just gonna comment this one out. And this is a really cool type of a style. If you've got a blog and you wanna post some really cool looking funky um, graph, so you can just use pltxkcd. If you turn it off to false, it's gonna not really go back to none 
funky, but it will be more straight lines around it. So if you just go through, and how do we really save these figures? Uh, well, that's pretty easy. Just use plt.savefig and give your figure a name, um, uh, age.png, and that will save it in this directory. So look at here, there is no salary age PNG here. And if I run this code again, there you go, it's here. Let's go ahead and bring more data. So this is what I was talking to you about. Um, that's pretty much the same data, but in bigger range of 18 to 55. I'm just gonna come here, copy that in place of these. I'm just gonna call this H. I'm gonna call this one Python salary because the plots have that naming, Java salary, all salary. So if I run that, you will see that there is more data. It looks re looks really funky, false. Okay, that looks a bit more serious now. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the second part of Matplotlib, which I will show you the subplots.